Today I'm here with Becky Simon from uh, or at the Woodman Research Farm at the University of New Hampshire and it is April. It's actually April 16th. There was some snow yesterday, but you couldn't be able to you couldn't tell because we're in this high tunnel. This is the spinach, the winter spinach that was growing throughout the season. We were here last uh, October when they were transplanting it and getting ready to see what what it would be producing throughout the winter. So um, it is here, it's still producing, it looks pretty healthy. And uh, Becky, what were your experiences? This was a really, really tough winter and how did it perform? It was a really tough winter and uh, it looks really good now. Uh, it took a long time to get going. And so one of our experiences was that um, it took longer to get going in the mm -hmm. fall and it did not produce as much through the cold part of the winter as we had hoped, but it really came on in the late winter. Great, and then you were, were you had a harvest um, schedule that you followed? Yes, we were harvesting every two weeks, harvesting okay. all mature leaves at that time so that we could keep good yield data. Great, and did you have, um, you said three different varieties that you were monitoring? That's right, out here we had space, taiyi, and regiment. Did you notice just sort of, you know, observationally if there was one that was performing better than the other? Uh, no, not in terms of yields. In uh -huh. terms of yields, they look to be roughly on par. Uh -huh. um, they are different types of varieties, and so there were sort of different leaf characteristics, yep. but for uh, if you had, you know, they were all quite nice. Another issue with winter growing is you have to sort of monitor the irrigation, the water moisture level that your plants are receiving. Typically you do not need as much um, water irrigation in the winter because the water table ra rises, the plants are not transpiring as much, so there isn't a huge requirement for water, which is a great benefit um, for winter growing. However, there are times that you might need to add water if it's a, a you know, particularly hot or sunny winter. You don't get hot winters, but you get a sunny winter. It can really dry things out inside. Uh, so there are different methods for watering. You can do overhead. You can have a system that would um, you'd be able to basically turn on a, a yard hydrant in the, you know, when you're ready to water, it would fill up the whole system. You'd water and then you drain it out so then it wouldn't freeze. Um, but you can also put in just little sprinkler heads in here, hand water. There are a lot of different methods. Uh, Becky had probably a very specific system she used and uh, what did you find was, was what you needed to do throughout the winter? Well, we don't have a sprinkler system installed, and that would have probably been nice, but we instead used a, hand, a wand. We, mm -hmm. don't have a, we have a frost-free hydrant elsewhere, but we don't have one here, so we had to pipe a hose in and yep. hand water. And we had to do a fair amount of it, more than I typically do during the winter in here. Great. And you were saying that a lot of that has to do also with the soil quality. This was a drier soil sort of going into the season, so it, it needed a lot more moisture than normal. Yeah, it was definitely drier when we planted than would be optimal. Right. So as you can see, there are plenty of, of options for um, irrigation, and it is something to keep uh, track of throughout the winter. So you can make sure your plants stay happy.